In the movie Instant Family, Pete and Ellie Wagner start considering the option of adopting a child after being taunted by a relative who thinks they will never have kids. Initially half serious, they eventually decide to enroll in a foster parents course. Pete and Ellie decide that Lizzie, a teenager in the system, is the child they want to help raise. And as if parenting a teenager isn't tough enough, they soon find out she has two younger siblings as well. Pete and Ellie are determined to make a difference in the lives of these kids, but they soon find out that expectations rarely match reality. Through a series of missteps and on-the-job training, the Wagners realize that their dream was slowly draining their lives. I love the honesty of the scene where the couple is discussing the prospect of giving up their goal and sending the kids back to the foster system. For a few moments, it seems so simple, so ideal. Give up and get them out of our lives. Hand over the siblings and get the sympathy from others. Throw in the towel on this trio and pretend like nothing ever happened. After a few minutes of conspiring and daydreaming, the couple realizes they can't do that. They've made a choice and they're going to see it through no matter the cost. Their grit reminds me of the words of the Apostle Paul as he writes to the early church meeting in a place called Galatia. He tells those Jesus followers, let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. As I think about the Wagner's determination to see their decision through, I'm encouraged and I'm challenged by them. It begs the question, what do I want to quit? Maybe you're a student who wants to impact your school. You do your best to be kind to others and show people what it means to follow Jesus. However, it's not helping your social status. Instead, you're taking flack for your faith. Maybe you're invited that coworker to church a hundred times. Each time the conversation gets super quiet or they avoid eye contact with you for the next three days, you're doing the right thing, but it doesn't feel rewarding being shot down at that moment time and time again. For years, you've invested in your marriage. You've been faithful and you've pursued your spouse, but they aren't reciprocating that effort. They're downright cold, distant, indifferent. You promise death to you part, but now you're just praying for a way out. In these moments, we get to roll up our sleeves and push through the pain. We've got to remain faithful, even when all we want to do is quit. In the moments when it feels like our circumstances will never change, we can't let our emotions outweigh our convictions. Why? Not for the sake of positive self-talk or to be a martyr. It all goes back to what Paul promised. Don't grow tired of doing good, because at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing. Earlier in the same letter, Paul tells us that you will always harvest what you plant. You can't change anyone, but we can control our choices. Pete and Ellie stuck it out, and in the end, they gained a family. It wasn't easy, and it came with significant costs, but in the end, their hard work yielded a fullness that wouldn't have happened with shortcuts. The way you live in front of your classmates matter. Movements of God happen one small choice at a time. You're going to have that one friend that would rather keep partying, whom week after week gives you a million excuses for why they can't come to church. The change that Jesus wants to do in someone starts with you believing it and not giving up on them. The coworker that keeps turning you down might say yes when the time is right. Your invitation could be the catalyst God uses to show them they matter to him. 99 times you thought you failed, and then finally you reap a harvest. If you're willing to never give up, you'll change the world. The spouse that keeps giving you the stiff arm is looking for an excuse to discredit your devotion. However, what if as you continually practice your promise of faithfully loving and serving them, they witness unconditional love? Your dedication could be what causes their walls to drop. The reality is that we can't control the outcomes, but we do control our decisions. Making a difference won't be easy, but we can choose to believe that at just the right time, a breakthrough is coming because we serve a God who always keeps his promises.